The special session of the City of Pleasant, Texas will now come to order October 14th, 2014 at 6.01 p.m. Item 2 is a roll call. Ms. Israel. Here. Mr. Sines. Here. Mr. Best. Here. Ms. Pacifica. Here. Mr. Gagos. Here. All members but Mr. Garza are present. Item 3 is a hearing to receive comments and answer questions on the proposed annexation of the following property. A 236-acre tract of land in the Nancy Makeda Survey Abstract Number 565, Ascos County, Texas. If you'd like to speak at this time, uh, just for uh, to run the meeting along, we'll, we'll keep comments in three minutes. Council plan. may or may not respond. Mayor, we'd like to read the service plan first. <clears throat> okay. And please note that Mr. Garza has joined us. density as those found within the newly annexed areas. Number three, maintenance of water and wastewater facilities. All of the newly annexed proper properties within the water and wastewater service area of the City of Pleasanton, existing water and wastewater facilities owned by the City of Pleasanton shall be available for you. Number four, solid waste collection. City of Pleasanton, Texas contracts for the collection of solid waste and refuse, with, refuse within its corporate limits with Republic Services Allied Waste. Solid waste collection will be provided to citizens in the newly annexed areas at the same or similar level of service now being provided to other areas of the city with like topography, land use, and density as those found within the newly annexed areas. City may negotiate with annexed areas to allow continued services within an existing solid waste management provider. After the second anniversary of the annexation date, the city will impose fees and provide the service. If areas with private roads and or gates are arranged so that garbage may be collected without creating a safety hazard, the city at its discretion may collect the garbage provided proper indemnification is received from the community association or individual property owners. The city will then impose fees and provide the service. Garbage collection locations shall be subject to the approval of the supervisor in the event the city does not collect garbage within the areas with private roads and or gates, residents of these areas will not be billed for service after the two-year date. Number five, maintenance of roads and streets. Any and all public roads, streets, or alleyways shall be maintained to the same degree and extent that other public roads, streets, and alleyways are maintained in the areas of the city with like topography, land use, and density as those found within newly annexed areas. Private roads will remain under the ownership of the landowner or homeowners association, if applicable, and as such maintained by the association or landowner. Number six, maintenance of parks, playgrounds, and swimming pools. The City of Pleasanton is not aware of the existence of any publicly owned parks, playgrounds, or swimming pools now located in the proposed areas of annexation. In the event any such parks, playgrounds, or swimming <clears> pools do exist and are public facilities, the City will maintain such areas and facilities to the extent and degree and to the same or similar level of service <coughs> provided other such areas and facilities within the corporate limits of the City with like topography, land use, and density as those found within the newly annexed areas. Private facilities will remain under the ownership of the homeowners association or landowner and as such maintained by the association or landowner. Number seven, maintenance of any publicly owned facility, building, or municipal service. The City of Pleasanton, is, Texas, is not aware of the existence of any publicly owned facility, building, or other municipal service now located in the proposed areas of annexation. 
In the event any publicly owned facility, building, or other municipal service does not exist in our public facilities, the city will maintain such areas and facilities to the extent and degree and to the same or similar level of service now being provided to other such areas and facilities within the corporate limits of the city with like topography, land use, and density as those found within the newly annexed areas. Number eight, other services. The City of Pleasanton, Texas finds and determines that such services as planning, code enforcement, animal control, library, parks and recreation, court, and general administration will be made available after the effective date of annexation at the same or similar level of service now being provided to other areas of the city with similar topography, land use, and density as those found within the newly annexed areas. Construction of any capital improvements to be completed within two and a half years. Uh, number one, police and fire protection and solid waste collection. City of Pleasant in Texas finds and determines that it may not be necessary to acquire or construct any capital improvements within two and a half years of the effective date of the annexation <coughs> to particular annexed areas for the purpose of providing police protection, fire protection, emergency medical services, or solid waste collection. The city has plans to conduct a feasibility analysis for additional fire protection facilities in the vicinity. Until such time as the feasibility study has been completed and the council directs further action, the city finds and determines that it has at the present time adequate facilities and other resources to provide the same type, kind, and level of service and protection which is presently being administered to other areas already incorporated into the city of Pleasanton with like topography, land use, and population density as those found within the newly annexed areas. <coughs> the two, water and wastewater facilities. The city of Pleasanton finds and determines that it is not necessary for the city of Pleasanton to acquire or construct any capital improvements within two and a half years of the effective date of the annexation of particular air, annexed areas being annexed. <coughs> Number three, roads and streets. The city of Pleasanton, Texas finds in terms that it is not necessary to acquire or construct any capital improvements within two and a half years of the effective date of the annexation of the particular annexed areas. Number four, maintenance of parks, playgrounds, swimming pools, and any other publicly owned facility, building, or service. The city of Pleasanton, Texas finds and determines that it is not necessary to acquire or construct any capital improvements within two and a half years of the effective date of the annexation of the particular annexed areas for the purpose of parks maintenance, playgrounds, swimming pools, and other publicly owned facility building <coughs> or system. Number five, maintenance of current septic system. Any resident who currently utilizes a septic system to manage wastewater shall be entitled to continue said system except for the following. Should a, sec should a septic system located within 500 feet of an existing sewer main fail to the point where repair costs will exceed the cost of replacement, the property owner shall be required to connect to the sewer system. Specific findings. The City of Pleasanton, Texas finds and determines that this proposed service plan will not provide any fewer services and will not provide a lower level of service in the area being considered for annexation that were in existence in the proposed areas at the time immediately preceding the annexation process. Given the proposed annexation area's topography, land utilization, and population density, the service levels to be provided in the newly annexed areas will be equivalent to those provided to other areas of the city with similar characteristics. Terms. This plan shall be valid for a term of 10 years. Renewal of the service plan is at the discretion of the City of Pleasanton, Texas. Level of service. Nothing in this plan shall require the city to provide a uniform level of full municipal services to each area of the city, including the annexed areas, if different characteristics of topography, land use, and population density are considered a sufficient basis for providing different levels of service. Amendments. <coughs> the plan shall not be amended unless public hearings are held in accordance with Chapter 43 of the Texas Local Government Act Code. So that's the uh, annexation service plan that uh, is being extended in connection with this uh, annexation. Okay. Thank you. We have uh, Judge Batista. All right, once again, I'm not here in my capacity as judge. I'm here as a taxpayer and property owner. And I did a little research or made a couple of phone calls in reference to the comment that was made last Monday in reference to the insurance. That supposedly at this point, if we were incorporated, then the city has a type three rating. When I contacted the insurance company, that will not affect us. Our insurance will not change on the dollar amount for the simple fact that we are not five miles out from the city limits. We are within the city limits in a sense. In other words, the five mile radius does not affect us, so there will be no change in our insurance premium. Also, the only benefit I could see for this to happen that would change what we're receiving right now is going from the sheriff's office to the police department. 
Other than that, there's no change because we're already, like I said the last time, receiving city services on water, sewer, garbage, etc. So unless our bill is going to change by at least a half of what we're paying right now <coughs> to offset what we will be paying on taxes, we're going to be paying the city extra money because I don't see a huge difference in our bill. And I do have a question. In reference to the proposed <coughs> property, my question is on the south side of Goodwin Street. Once you leave what is called uh, Dema Cardwell property, where that house is located, then you have an open field before you get to the Heights. Is all of that already incorporated in the city limits, or are y'all bypassing that and just taking this area here? In other words, if you're going to go down <coughs> this street, you need to be taking both sides. That's my opinion. Okay. You're not going to pick and choose because it's not right to pick and choose. Because if the left-hand side is not in the city limits, then I want an explanation. And then if you're going down Airport Road, FM 3510, it is my understanding that that new subdivision is inside the city limits. But if the rest of that property around that area is not, then why not? In other words, don't pick and choose. Well, we have to pick and choose. It's not right. Well, that's the only way you can do this, is to pick and choose what you're going to do. Now, would you like to give the reason behind this that you would not give last Monday? I gave you, I'll give you the same exact reason that I gave you last I Monday. I don't give me the reason then. I gave you the reason Monday. No, you didn't. I'll give it to you again if you'd like. No, sir. Okay. So at that point, picking and choosing does not work. You need to make it fair all the way across, not just one side of the road or the other side of the road. Just because the right-hand side is where the tax base is located right now, that is not fair to pick and choose and leave the open fields alone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Mr. Ellison. First of all, uh, I'm not hearing any official capacity either except as a private citizen. And I see several people here that have been longtime friends of mine, so I hope we're still friends after I'm through. <laughs> <laughs> I think what the judge is trying to say is it's not pick and choose, but the word is cherry pick, okay? And, and, and I've lived on Liberty Lane since 1994. And I've got every, every city service that we've ever needed, okay? Uh, I think I pay a premium for them, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, they pay my water bill significantly higher than if I was in the city. I don't know if that covers the cost, but I was all, always under the impression that it should be covering the cost. Um, you have a great police department here, and I assure you that if something happens bad on my street, they're going to be backing up the sheriff's office maybe before the sheriff's office even gets there. So adding the, the argument that it would improve our police protection from the presence of the police department, um, philosophically, whatever it would be, but I can tell you practically we're already going to ha we already have it, okay? Same thing with the fire department. I mean, I'm assuming that the Pleasanton Fire Department is going to come see, take, come see us, okay? I mean, I've always assumed that. I mean, I don't think German's going to come over there and do it. And I know they're not going to let my house burn down without at least trying to come put it out. So when you look at the utilities, you look at the social services, so to speak, that is the protective services, we already have that. Um, I don't know a whole lot about the legal process involved in this. Uh, that's not why I'm here. I'm, I'm just here to let you know that, that the way that folks, that my neighbors are, is that we, I mean, all of a sudden, we've been out there f for 30 years, and then all of a sudden it's time to take us in. And, you know, I, I guess it was, some of y'all I know were about 12 years ago. When was the first time? Mm -hmm. And I'm not even really sure why it got, how it failed. All I remember there was one big meeting at the end of Liberty Lane, and then the next thing I knew, it, it didn't happen. And and uh, uh, and, I, and I can tell you that if something at the end of Liberty Lane caused it not to happen, then that's the same something is still there. Still there. It mentioned to me that it might be the drainage or whatever the situation is, but it's still the same. It's still bad. I don't know what the city's obligation is to fix that once they take it in. But if they have an obligation to do it, then it's still there. Okay. 
and I was told that it would be several thousand dollars uh, more. It was too expensive to take it in relative to the potential tax revenues. All right. um, <coughs> so if that was what the deal was, then the problem is still there, and, and maybe even worse because of uh, the the other the housing and stuff that's been added in those years that would prevent or cause drainage not to be conveniently uh, to occur. Um, how much time? I didn't know how much time I had to start with. Three, but if you, if you want to finish up. I'll well, and, and the other thing is, and this is gonna sound really silly, okay? I'm, I'm really worried about a couple of things with regard to the city, and uh, some of it may be rumor and some of it may not be rumor, but what are, what are you going to do to maintain our roads? I mean, our roads are there. What, what, what will happen that will change it, that will make it better since they're already there? Is there anything that can be done? I don't know. We haven't, we haven't looked at it. I mean, it's not I mean, part I, of the well, city, so. It just goes to one of those deals where the, the, there's, there's a, 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 three sets of streets there uh, that, uh, and that we're not going to get anything in exchange for the additional that we're going to be paying. I understand that my utility bills will go down some, uh, I don't even know what y'all's tax rate is, but I'm assuming that it's not going to be offset by the by the decrease in my utility bills. And, and once again, let me—I I fear that I do some of this at my peril because I've been a public service servant almost all of my 40 years uh, as a lawyer, and taxpayers pay my salary, <coughs> and they pay my salary today, as a matter of fact. So standing up here and saying that you know I'm against an increase in taxes. I hope it doesn't make me sound like I'm, I'm an idiot, but I'm still a human being. And, and, I, and no, I'm serious. I'm still a human being. And the, from my personal perspective, the increase in taxes is not going to be worth it relative to what we're already getting, because we're already getting everything that we need out there. And, and that's kind of the that's kind of you're, you're you're kind of pleading our case for us. <laughs> okay. Uh, because you are already getting these services, it's just right to be incorporated into the city. Well, the, the, at least the, that's the. That, that's well, the deal doing. is though, is that I thought that I was already paying a premium for those through whatever my whatever I was getting. Okay. Uh, I assumed I was, and uh, uh, that there's going to be plenty of areas that are not annexed that are still be going to be getting the same services from the police and fire department and so forth and so on. And I'm assuming that somehow or another that is covered in some broad way, okay? Uh, because I don't believe that uh, local governmental entities do things for free totally. There's, there's somewhere or another that it's coming either directly or indirectly from the people that are receiving the services, okay? Um, so. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions? Council. Okay, one, one other thing that I did want to make a point is, is that we have a real severe oak wilt problem out there where we are. And if you decide to take us in, what, I, I know that y'all do maintenance on trees and stuff over, over high, over roads, do y'all not come in and trim that stuff up? We do. I don't know how often, I couldn't answer that. Well, we're Chris. really concerned about the fact that, uh, that oak wilt's going to be spread if uh, city employees don't, uh, uh, it's, it's a serious problem. Some of us have already spent several thousand dollars to preserve our trees, mm -hmm. and um, uh, I'm a little concerned about that because I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be. We, we won't be. Somebody's going to show up one day and start, and they're going to start on probably on Eileen, and that's where the heaviest infestation is. And then after they're through there, after a couple of three hours, they're going to move to Liberty Lane, and that's the next heavy. And that stuff gets spread real easy through uh, chainsaws and. Yep. And it's a very serious problem for us. We have beautiful trees out there, and it could potentially cost us several tens of thousands of dollars if it's not done correctly. Sure. You know? So, anyway, I, I know that I know what you're saying relative to making your case for you, but I don't. If I haven't been been paying a premium that covers the services that I'm getting, then I, I should have been. Okay. So, thank you very much. Any others? Yes, sir. If you want. Yes. All these houses, I think I've got the newest residents in there, or at least close to it. I built about four years ago. That's one of the reasons I built there is because it was in the, outside the city limits. And uh, you know, I'd like to ask uh, how much, how much can I anticipate if this happens? My taxes going up ten percent, twenty percent. 
That's kind of a relative question. You got a better better answer than I can give? City's tax rate is 0.48977 per $100 evaluation. So whatever the value of your house is or in your land, you would divide that by 100 and multiply by 0.48977 and that'd be the city tax. If you're not 65 and have any kind of special exemptions. Okay. Okay. I mean, can you give me an idea, of Gordon? You know, I'm playing uh, county and, and state now. What? Ten percent more. Uh, you got a calculator more? handy? I did, because I, I don't really have any idea on what you pay as far as your county taxes or school taxes. Well, I, I just really to give don't. you an idea, if you'd like. Let me see if I can just get you something to. Okay, for a hundred thousand, just figure for a hundred thousand. Yeah, I figure that's probably fair. Be a little less than five hundred dollars a year. Be four hundred eighty-seven dollars a year. So be five hundred dollars. Right, right under five hundred dollars a year per thousand. Per hundred thousand. Excuse me. Okay. Okay. Five hundred dollars. And you know what? What do? What? What am I going to get for this? You know, all I'm hearing is reduced. Well, that's kind of the. Rates. That's why it's. Um, it's kind of difficult because yeah, you are kind of already getting that stuff, but. Now we will be tasked to make sure that that's provided to you okay. where we're not now. I don't see that I'm getting any of that. I've called the police. They say, we, we, you're not city, call county. We call the county. They take care of it. That, wouldn't happen. that wouldn't happen now. And I'm, I'm fine with paying, calling the county. I've been, everything's been fine with the county. I mean, they, they've done us a good job. Except for the drainage. The next question is, what this area right in here, what is this, is this already in the city? That, that's, those are already in, like the first... Uh, yeah, it's like three houses and part of a yard on uh and, and the reason I understand that that happened is because they were going by property lines before it got cut up and didn't move those lines. So like that fourth house, part of it's in the city limits, the other part's in the county. It just kind of worked out odd that way, and it never got moved when those property lines got divided into lots for homes. Okay. If I'm wrong, you can correct me, Mr. Perkins, or anybody else that has knowledge, but that's my understanding as to why that's kind of odd. And kind of cuts into that fourth those fourth yards and as far as our road conditions you know i'll put those county roads up against any of the city roads in this town right now so i mean but you know if they, i don't think you have anything to offer there okay so. thank you any other comments sure. right your online on there you can look at the water rates, Judge, online, and you'll see the difference between the water rates outside the city limits and inside the city limits based on the size of meter you have, and, it, and you can determine what you'll pay, but they'll go down. I can't, I can't say that because I don't have the water rates memorized, but I can tell you they'll go down. Yes, ma'am. No, sir, that's one thing I don't. That's one thing I don't memorize. Hang on one second. <laughs> Let's let's keep a little bit of order. If you would please step up to the. And I hate to make you walk up there, but we we do record it, and that's our best best spot to to make sure it's recorded properly. I just want to say that my water bill this month was over three hundred dollars, and I do not water every day. I water three days a week, and I have a sprinkling system. My electric bill was a hundred and something. And to me, I just feel that it's an exorbitant amount of money for water. The water tower is just down the road from my house. Okay. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes, ma'am. Hayden Road also. Now, they were talking about the water rates, and I got to playing with this this afternoon, and I was looking at the 2010 when it did a inside-outside rate increase, just the base. It was a dollar and a half. This time, on August the 7th, when y'all passed it, it's $33.62 higher for us. And I thought, boy, that is a massive jump. And my water bill this month was $426. My neighbors had one as high as 900, and I watered the Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, just like I'm dozing or told to do. So, if even if we're annexed, I've noticed on further down here, still we're I'm going to be paying 250 to 300 dollars. So, I don't want to be annexed, but I don't want to pay that water rate. <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am, do you have two water meters at your house? Yes. Okay. 
Yes, I do have one for the house and one for the Good. yard. Good. Thank you. Any other comments? Yeah, I want to say something. They, yes, uh, this please. area right here, um, I think the, the issue has been brought up, but there is extreme pooling of water when it rains. Um, and that looks to be now governed by the city and maintained by the city. Um, and I think what, what Judge Ellison was saying, and you said we're pleading your case for you, is that if the status quo is that we're not being benefited at all, then you can argue it both ways. I mean, we're not, we're not receiving anything, so I don't understand why I should have to pay $1,500 extra a year to really, at the end of the day, only be receiving, I mean, Pleasanton PD to come, you know, patrol my street a few times a day. Um, I don't think, I think when you look at it heavily, unless you're going to guarantee that the citizens on these three streets are going to be benefited in some way by uh, road construction, uh, whatever it may be, uh, all we're getting is really just extra police patrol, um, and it's not worth $1,500 for me as a citizen to pay that. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Yes, sir. Okay. No. I live on Eileen. Uh, uh, what is the purpose of y'all annexing our, our property? Uh, and, and, an annexation place? really, all an annexation is when you have a city that's growing like the city of Pleasanton is, uh, the only way you can grow as a city, unlike a county or a state that has a set boundary, we don't. And the only way for the city to grow and incorporate the property around us is to annex. Well, how come y'all don't go north towards? Uh, like well, if we were going north, the people from, all that, from that area would know. be coming in saying, "Why don't you go west?" So, I mean, it's one of those. It just this there is a, start. There ain't a lot of big houses, I guess, that way, or a lot of more taxes. So that's There's, what you're saying. This is a more concentrated uh, population-wise than the other. It's a little bit harder to do this when you tell you know you'd asked about the big property that's open. You know, when there's one house on 30 acres. Justifying that's a little more difficult than when you have a, uh, a more densely populated, you know, telling somebody I'm going to annex your 30 acres in the city with your one house on it. I mean, that, that seems, uh, that's a little tough to explain. Well, now one gentleman's right that Oakville is coming and it's headed for everybody out there, whether they like it or problem. not. And it's going to be a problem. I don't understand it was a city that caused that to begin with when they were doing clearing the lines out on that highway. From what I understood, that's how it spread. But uh, it is going to be a problem for everybody out that way. Yeah, my, my brother lives on Eileen, and he's had to trap down several big trees because of that. Just, well, Mayor, just for clarification, <clears throat> if I guess if the city maintains any, <clears throat> excuse me, any oak trees, they'd have to be on the city easement or right away. I and I can I may be wrong, but. Uh, the city is not going to go on private properties to take care of Oak Wilt. We haven't done it in Oak Forest. We haven't done it in any part of that. Citizens have been taking care of what's on the... Uh, well, on your on private the, property, or yes, on sir. the city property. Well, so, but if, if it's on an easement or in the city's right-of-way, yes, I think it's the city's responsibility. But as far as on private property, I don't think that there is an obligation... Um, oh, that's, I don't city. think that's what he's saying. He was just asking about like trimming along the trees. If we're trimming trees off over the road or something, yeah, but are we going to make sure that we uh, take care of uh, utility uh, services that do that? Uh, electrical it's, it's, it's companies. It's rare when we do it. And if they're not treating it, yes, we need to get on to them. But as far as on private property, we'd have to do all of Oak Forest and everywhere else. I mean, Mayor? Uh, are you done, Mr. Gibbs? Um, yes, sir. Ms. Israel. I just want to make a quick comment about that, and that is correct. The utilities um, are um, have been cutting the oak trees, and there should be a meeting in the near future with the city uh, about their um, about the way that they are cutting oak trees and how they need to be done in the future. And that was a, a quick discussion at the. Um, uh, TML convention, and uh, I anticipate that it will be followed through on. I feel confident it will be followed through on, and we're all very concerned about Oakwilt as well. And I feel pretty confident that our maintenance people, if they were going to touch an oak tree, they would touch it as it was supposed to be handled and would be trimmed at the right time of the year. It would be treated the way it should be handled so we don't spread oak wilt. It is a big concern. Mm -hmm. And well, the problem is about the annexation because none of these people want it. I don't want it. Uh, is it. Does it matter what we say right here? 
Does it really matter? Y'all are going to go ahead and do it anyways, aren't you? I mean, we won't know until we get there. This isn't taken lightly, just so you know. I mean, it sounds like y'all are just telling us, hey, you've already made up your mind. It's not the case, but it does, you know, this is, if we're going to grow as a city, this we've is already the most. been part of the city. We are the city. What, that's I mean, the point. The now we're going to make that official. See that, you, do you understand what you're saying is we're already getting everything we need from you. We don't want to pay for it. No, so the citizens, well, that's exactly what you're saying. It's not true. That's we're already getting everything we need no. is what you said. And I'm not going to argue with you. The point is, those people in those first three houses on Eileen, you're telling me you're getting the exact same service as them, and that's... Those poor people there can't even get their, their flooding problem taken care of within the city, and you're telling us you're going to do something for us? Well, the, here's the thing that you don't obviously don't understand about the flooding thing. It doesn't start right there. It starts from someplace else, and if that uh, someplace else where it starts isn't in the city, we can't begin to treat the problem. Is this going to be the same way as the people that are living uh, back towards uh, Oak Forest? Is that in the city, Oak Forest, back there? Oak Forest is in the city, yes. Yeah, where you built that new subdivision back there that's flooding everybody else, was that? And that, that uh, we didn't build that. That's that's your, the builders in the community doing that. The city did not build that. Nope. Nope. Well, not the city. It was built there outside the city. So were we. Any other comments? Can I ask one question? Sure. Well, we, I, don't, I don't know if we can determine that. It'll probably be either Mr. Best or Ms. Pacifica just because that's where their two um, districts join. So it'd probably be one of them. There might be a rebalancing, too, because of some of the apartment complexes that are coming. Excuse me, I said there might be a rebalancing as well on the districts because of some of the apartments that are going to be filling up. Uh, so we just don't really know who's going to end up with that district. With that We're required district. to do it every how many years? <coughs> We're required to do it every 10 years, but, <coughs> but Judge, uh, we We're have... Not no. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. And, and I don't think that's the wrong way. I'm a public servant. I don't need to be voting. That's all. I just want to... One of you all might be a council member. You all get annexed. <laughs> we, we have we have visited with our city attorney, and it is the total discretion of the council to direct the staff to start a redistricting process if the annexation <laughs> is completed or at any time between any census counts. If the boundaries of the city or the population of the city is unbalanced from one district to another. So obviously the council can turn right back around and, 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 and tell us they want to redistrict the city. That'll be determined by the council. Mayor? Mrs. Um, what, what I would tell you, and I would believe I ha all the council would agree with me that if you have an issue that uh, we all care about our districts. Wait a minute. No, no. And to all the city. So Mayor so we would represent you. Yeah. Yeah. So we would represent you. I think all of us would be open to having conversation from anybody in that area and bringing their, um, their concerns to the city uh, until you have a specific representative. You have all of us. And then when you have one, you have that direct representative and you have all of us as well. So I hope that answers your question. No, we're talking about both. It's a combination of the two. And annexation is a combination of both. Um, I don't know if that's the real point. I mean, I think that's what everybody's putting an emphasis on. Uh, that's not the way I'm looking at it. If that's the way it sounded when I said that, what I was saying is it only is right that you're already receiving everything from the city. Okay, now be a part of the city. I mean, you're already getting the services. Well, and, and the thing is, with uh, with an annexation, you've got to start somewhere. And if, if it was in another part, it'd be those citizens sitting in here with the same deal. That is in the city on the other side of the what the city is giving us. I mean, all I get is water 
of the trash, not paying any of it. Just like you're doing. Mm -hmm. Well, the police don't come in. County fire. County fire. The thing about the police, the police is, is that they're going to come only if it's a really serious situation. Like we don't expect, expect them to come help right. somebody's house got burgled. That's the sheriff's fault. It'd be more of along the lines of protection of fellow officers or protection of, of, of something along that line if they were to come out. <coughs> I mean, you know, the, the city's not going to leave somebody in distress out there. You know? the, the city wouldn't leave somebody in distress out there. So they would be there to assist um, at the chief's discretion. But, but that that is the point. You know, you were saying we're already getting everything. Why do I have to pay extra to get that? Yeah, we're, I'm not getting their services too, right? I don't really know how that works, to be honest with you. That's the way that it works, so I'm not getting their services too. We do get a donation from the county for the volunteer fire department, which would probably cover about one fire. We don't have any fire. <laughs> yes, absolutely yeah, not. They get grants from the state too, don't they? Not unless we apply for them specific. We don't get grants from the state for money. We can get grants from the state. And actually, it's the federal government. It's the federal government. Sir? There are there are other governmental entities that support the fire department besides the city of Pleasant. That report to the support. If we apply for certain grants and receive them, yes, the federal government can support us through the grant process. And they're not required by law to support. The agreements by the volunteer fire departments on what territories will be covered is strictly between the volunteer fire departments. But if something happens out in the county, then it's between those volunteer fire chiefs on how they're going to respond. Okay. So Any other comments? No, sir. The, all the grants that we have received for the fire department in the three years I've been here have come straight from the federal government. I think that's the federal government, too, so I'm not getting it free in the sense that it's absolutely free for the fire department. Sure. My county well, taxes don't go to the fire department. Hang on just a second. We're not, we're not, I mean, we're not here. I'm, I'm not here to, but, but the thing is, the, the conversation has changed. You told me I'm already getting everything. Why would I want to pay for it? Now you're saying, well, wait, I'm not getting all that. So. I'm a little confused as to the direction you're taking this because it seemed like in the beginning everybody was saying we're already getting this stuff why would i want to be annexed and then when i kind of turned it around you're like wait 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 we're not getting all that so i, I don't understand the direction i guess well basically what i would really like to see is somebody say the reason that we're getting annexed is because you want the tax revenue i'm not going to say that I'm, i mean i know you want me to but that's not the case as a city we are growing period this is a the city is growing I mean, what, what, why do you, what control do you need over those three streets to make the city better? What control do you need as a city council to make the city of Pleasanton better? What are we doing that you're going to try to prevent or improve to make the city of Pleasanton better? Flat out, right now, practically speaking, what is it? For the city to grow, which will make the city better if we can expand our services out into the broader range, which is in our ETJ now. If you'll let me finish, I might answer your question. As we spread into the ETJ, the city will grow, and that will benefit us by, yeah, of course, tax revenue is part of it, but that's not the only reason. If we want to grow to expand to incorporate other businesses out past the airport, north of here, the only way we can do that is through this process. And we've picked to look at this as a stepping off point. The problem in the past, I think, is when this has been brought up, it's a hard decision to make, and the seven of us are the ones that have to answer to it. Yeah, but there's not the, the density of this area is not the same as that on Airport Road. Okay. I don't I don't see how it doesn't. <clears throat> 
that, that's don't, don't try to bring that into the conversation. We're, we're specifically talking about this 236 acres. And as a city, we've looked at it. And this is a stepping off point to annexing property. And we're here today, obviously, to listen to your comments. But you've got to understand if we don't if you don't do this as a city, you cannot grow. You're confined. And do I want to see the city get bigger? I grew up here. I loved it when it was 7000 people. But that's not the case. And for us to maintain control, there's some things we have to do. It's a hard decision. And uh, it's, it's not one taken lightly, but it's for the it's right for what's best for the city as a whole to grow. What is it that you want to control in the future? Just the growth of the city is what we're controlling by the sanitation, and that's it. We're controlling the growth of the city. I, I don't really know what the difference is and what's required by the county and, and what's required by the city. So, but we could get that information to you. What's the annexation process from here? Uh, what is the next step? This is all new to me. The next steps would be to present the ordinance to the city council for first and second readings. When was that for November 6th for the first reading, November 20th for the second reading. Thank you. Uh, the adoption of the resolution. We're recommending that it become effective on January 1st, 2015. Okay. Any other questions? What, uh, one of the services I didn't see and hear Mr. Lindsay was with the street lighting. Uh, we don't we don't really have like a service plan for that but what's happened in the past is if somebody's looking for street lighting they've come to the council requested it we've looked into it and if it warranted then we've put up put up lights you could talk to the county about that too you've been paying taxes there but but to answer your question as far as the city's concerned that's in my okay. experience on the council uh, if it hasn't been done you know like a subdivision that's been around for a while uh, I think a good example was like off of Eagle View. Uh, that had been there for quite a while, and then somebody came in and said, hey, look, there's people walking at night, and we'd like some street lights, and I think we looked at it and put one up there. When those requests come in, sir, we, I forward them directly to the police chief. He has his folks who work the night shifts uh, to do a drive around, and we try to do it when it's at the darkest moon possible in the month to get the worst case effect, and then the police chief makes a determination based on the number of calls for service that have been made in that area, the number of people possibly that jog, ride bicycles, walk. There's a whole lot of factors the police chief factors in. And then he makes a recommendation to the council. Uh, if the, and if the recommendation is accepted by the council and they give the staff to proceed, then we contact the electric company in that area and we, we begin that process. Other questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Everything that's in the bold. All this. You just said you, were, you couldn't do this one because... I didn't say we couldn't. So you're not doing it because there's not enough property population. It's already in the city limits. Yeah, and that part's already in the city. Here? Yes, sir. South, South that's South. already in the city limits right there. That whole field? Not the whole field, but part of that is already in the city limits. Yes, sir. Same distance back from? Mm. Does that... Uh, we'd have to look at a map. I don't really remember where it stops to the okay. south. But then you're coming over to here. So you're going to get this area where these houses are at here, right? I'm reading this right. There's houses yes. here. Everything inside that bold, uh, the bold line. That empty piece of property back here. Is that it? Now say again. This piece here. It's in the, the, it's in the 236 acres, yes. Is that the empty property that's back there? Or is this the one that goes right up against, I guess, Pulliam, I believe it is. Uh, it's, it goes to, I believe, the back of the property owners that offer Pulliam now. Okay. So you stopped right there. You know, it was just arbitrary. You decided that's where we're going to stop. We're not going to go to the street. We're not going to go all the way to Pulliam, I believe it is. Uh, what was the justification of stopping there? I can't remember. On a property Why didn't we stop there? Was Section of, of 
the local government code that we're uh, applying, the law that we have to follow in uh, following this annexation, uh, limits us to a certain number of properties and we're also limited to a certain acreage um, and we're also limited to a certain width of the property. For example, we can't, we couldn't just annex Airport Boulevard along that right of way because the state law says you have to and you can't annex anything less than a thousand foot in width. We can't we, we can't annex anything uh, more than 100 properties uh, with our uh, 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 low densely populated. Uh, so we had to we had to pick a logical uh, place to uh, begin our annexation, and that was dictated by where do we have contiguous city limits. Um, and where do we end it? Well, it was based on, uh, simply on the number of properties um, and coming up with a, an acreage that didn't put us beyond our 10% maximum. <coughs> um, that was simply it. It was simply uh, looking at land areas and how they sit in relation to the current city limit. Is the city figured up how much money it's going to take in? In taxes on that? Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't seen any numbers to that effect. I think there was a figure that was thrown out there somewhere around $90,000. $90,000 a year? Mm -hmm. But you're going to pick up annexing all of this? Yeah, how many houses is it? 88 parcels. Eight parcels of property. Four parcels of which have um, nine, nine open development agreements, uh, which have been executed, and that's based on the requirement of state law that we, <coughs> uh, we have to offer a non annexation development agreement to properties which have an agricultural exemption, as it's defined in other areas of state law. So um, that's 84 uh, properties which. Uh, not have the agricultural exemption which would be $90,000 is a big amount in the whole scheme of things that the city is not so good on spending its money. Yes. You're going to spend that $90,000. Are you, are you going to spend it wisely or are you just going to... No, we're going to blow it. <laughs> 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 it hasn't happened in a long time, but I can tell you that we have a, an excellent rating, and we've been very uh, frugal with the money that we have. The problem that you're seeing is, in the past, there wasn't money to do some things that needed to be done, so projects got left out. Well, now that we have the money to do those things, rehabilitate streets, put in new infrastructure, we're doing those things. So we're doing our job. We are doing our job. As a council and as a city, we are doing our job. Yes, sir. Well, you don't, you have a board, you have a strip along Airport Road, you have that thousand foot wide area. You misunderstood what he said about it. There, there's a kind of so weird little. Narrow, narrow strip. It goes back to cities years ago started strip annexing yeah. just to get out on the highway, and then they would worry about yeah. outside the boundaries. We do, we have a lot more than <coughs> Airport Road. Now there are some. There are some areas along Airport Road, especially in the area of Bonita Vista, that is owned by the developer. But there's a master plan agreement with the council dating back to 2007. As they develop each phase of that neighborhood, they will come and ask for voluntary annexation in any case. And in fact, they did hear about this time last year before they started infrastructure development on phase two. I mean, I, I could understand the idea of wanting to control Airport Road because I fear that it's going to be in control. It's already well along its way, either voluntarily or involuntarily, because of, of the size of the airport. I mean, it goes two thirds of the way at 97, and you control what's going in across the street there. So, the idea of it, taking that territory so that you can have contiguity, contiguity to be able to control something further out that you're worried about, I don't think flies. I don't know if anybody said that that's what we're doing, so. Well, you were talking, you brought up controlling things along Airport Road, Mr. Mayor, and you've got to have contiguity, contiguity to do it. 
at Airport Road, if you look at our map, that's in the city limits. The airport's in the city limits, and so is it on both sides. There's a strip on both sides. There's a square in the center that's not. But what, what is to be controlled past our area? When we, when we get to that, we'll, we're not there yet. This is the first hurdle to jump. Other questions? Yes, sir. What happens after the accession? Do you send boards of code compliance people out to tell them? <laughs> 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 we're making us out to be really evil people. <laughs> 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 city, I don't know where this is coming from. I, I thought we've been pretty good to the citizens of Pleasanton, but apparently. The trick here is if your neighbors complain about you, we will be out there. <laughs> Any other questions? Is the city annexing more property outwards? This is this is all we're looking at right now. I thought I thought I thought they were working in another you were talking about. No, somebody made a comment about why don't you go north because there's houses. And I said, well, if we if we would have done that. I thought they were they were doing some stuff. The water lines. Kind of out 97. Oh, there was a project out there that. Uh, uh, the 97 quarter is another report of the future land use assumptions in the master plan, and we were given direction by council in June to get our walk to get our water infrastructure to the I 37 quarter, and uh, uh, we are. We are under design oh, and out to bid on portions of that project right now. I didn't, I didn't know that's what you're talking about. I apologize. Yeah, I take it from your comments, Mr. Mayor, that this is probably the first annexation project in the modern history of Pleasanton. It's been a while. I don't. I don't know when the last one was. The last one. That, the last one was when we took in Mr. Porter. We took in South. Do you know what year that was? Uh, Mr. Lamb was city manager, I think, and that's when we took in um, North some property North. Uh, Pleasanton and then <clears throat> south of Corn Road, these lots, and uh, I think there was three different areas, but they were in different areas of town. About 12 years? Uh, oh, gosh. About 12? I've been on the council too long, Lynn. Uh, it's been several years. I, I don't recall yeah. when. But that was, the last pro that was the last time we had Amex. That was in uh, 2002, Mr. Gage. 2002. That, well, 12 years ago. Probably 65. <laughs> you get $16,000 exemption here. Yes, sir. Somebody actually uh, commented on that in an email, uh, and I believe the comment, and it was from somebody in the annex, proposed annexation area, the comment was, uh, I get a total exemption and my taxes were frozen by the county and the school district. Is the city going to do the same? And we, we went ahead and did our homework anyway, but actually the school district is the only one that freezes taxes. There's an exemption offered by the county. There's an exemption offered by the city. When you turn 65, everybody's valuation is Yes, sir. I'm just trying to figure out how, how much I'm going to be paying next year. I'm going to be paying next year. I don't know what my valuation is. I'm using 50 cents. I'm going to be using 10,000 cents. I'm using 50 cents. I'm going to be using 50 cents. That's a good rule of thumb. I'm trying to figure out why I'm not even out of my home. Yes, sir. Forgive me if you went over this in the first meeting. I was able to make it, but um, and, and putting revenue raising aside because you're extending the tax base, I don't want to go into that. Okay. But as far as growth, can you just elaborate on some of the, the attributes of growth that the council has determined to make this beneficial move for the city of Pleasant? I mean, what specifically outside of raising revenue makes this a good decision on y'all's behalf? Well, we've uh, what we've really gotten into the last few years with. Uh, some of the projects and some of the planning that we've done and future land use assumptions to make sure that those land uses um, that we can dictate and have some control over that that's 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 probably the biggest reason in my mind anyway um, the council or mr. Pearson or any of the other employees might have a different opinion but to me to help control 
what we've determined to be the future land use, that's probably the biggest reason. No, there's not. Okay. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. I would just like to know how Pleasanton's water rights compare to the other areas in this county. Um, well, first of all, let me address that, Mayor. You can't compare our water rates to other water rates because we have such redundancy in our system because our citizens demand it. Uh, I'll give you an example. In February of 2012, we had five of our wells down all in a four-week period, and we still kept tanks full, and our, our citizens and other uh, customers, such as you all, were continuing to receive water under, under pleasing pressures. There are other areas of this county that have one pump go down, the whole city's without water. And there are several cities in this county that experience that. So I have to tell you that this council and councils before this council and city managers before myself walked the talk. When they had no money to spend on anything else, they spent it on water and wastewater. I'd still like to know the breakdown of our prices. Well, we compare ourselves to a number of folks. We did a study about a year and a half in Clove to include Saw, San Marcos, and a bunch of other cities, large, small, and otherwise, who have redundancy in their system. And uh, to date, we have the third lowest rate out of that study we did. Well, anything else that comes on my water bill be lower other than the water rate? Will anything else be lower? The meter charge will be lower. The water is sewer and garbage. Um, I have to look at the garbage rate, but the water and the sewer will go down. Okay. Yeah. So if I had a $300 water bill, what will it be after you annex? I have no idea, ma'am. I'd have to look at the size of meter you have. You can go to the website. Look at the rates for inside the city limits, outside the city limits. <coughs> Determine how many gallons you pumped last month, and, and that would tell you. Yeah. yeah, That's what's kind of hard with water because everybody, the usage is so different across the city. I mean, even houses sitting next to each other, usage is different. So, <coughs> Other questions? Yes, sir. I would just like to clear up what city services am I getting now? I keep hearing that we're already getting up and up. Turn on the faucet, that's coming from us. Trash is also. Right. Well, you're, you're, I don't know what you're asking me. If you already know the services that you're getting. It's been said that the city's already supplied by, by uh, police protection. I've never seen a police protection. I didn't say that we supplied you with police protection. I said we would supply you. Yeah. I've never seen the city truck in and you shouldn't. They shouldn't be going down that road if they're doing it. They're hiding from somebody. <laughs> I mean, but I've been getting all these services. But I've been hearing you and others saying that we're already giving you the service, so that's why they're going to start charging you for it. I'm not giving you the service. I'm charging you. I don't. I don't. I really don't understand what you're what you're saying. No, I didn't understand what you said when you when you said that you were already giving us these services. You're already getting our wastewater, which you just said you were, okay? Okay. And, and police and fire protection is something that would be provided once you're part of the city. Okay, if you're, that's the other point. You just, y'all are confusing me with the direction you're taking this because you're telling me, hey, we're getting all this. And when I say, yeah, that's part of the reason we want to annex. And well, you say, Mary, wait a minute, we're not getting a thing. I don't so. want to get into this, but I need to, I'm going to have to. You, you pay county taxes. What do you get from the county? Nothing. I pay county taxes. What do I get from the county? They, they fix our well, well, yeah, because y'all are in the county, but the citizens of Pleasanton pay county taxes. We get absolutely nothing for the county because the county's divided in four precincts. They focus on county roads and the jail and the courthouse and everything they need to focus on. And uh, <laughs> But uh, we, as a taxpayer for the county, we don't, I mean, we live in the city 
and uh, that we don't get very much from them. So, I mean, this is not easy, as Clint said. This is, that's, I mean, we hadn't done this for 12 years because of opposition, and I think somebody had asked why we dropped it 12 years ago out there, and I think there was some process that were not followed correctly, so we had to stop. Yeah. But as long as you follow the process correctly and we do cross our T's and dot our I's, I mean, that, you know, this is part of, of what we're allowed to do as far as annexing. And I, I mean, I don't blame y'all one bit either. I mean, y'all are receiving the services, y'all are paying higher rates, and uh, why pay taxes? Why pay city taxes? You know? For a new police department, for a 24-hour police department, for the first bond that is $4 million for streets that we are about to hear which streets will be redone. We're not just redoing them. We're taking them down all the way to the base that was never there, and we're building the streets that the city uh, of Pleasanton citizens deserve. And we have looked forward to see when the next bond would be in place to do the same type of thing. We're building the... Um, uh, we're continuing the closed loop for the water system. We're looking at expanding the wastewater treatment center. We're looking at gray water possibilities for usage. Um, we are looking at development that we cannot talk about because it's not confirmed yet. We have a master plan in place that everybody in here has access to, and maybe some of your questions will be answered if you go and take a look where they see the growth of our city going in order to reach that growth and provide the control as well as services to our citizens we have to go out in that direction and then we have to be able to increase our ETJ so we'll be able to even go further when that area is necessary then we look at the next area where we need to annex and we look at what the possibility of development and growth is there and then we will take that under consideration probably not me I'll probably be off council by next year but I believe that this council wants to move forward in every possible way to do nothing but move the city of Pleasanton in a direction that we can all be proud of and more importantly we can maintain that's a, that's the end of it I'm sorry mayor It will expand past that. A mile past any new annexation, we will extend our ETJ another mile. Is that correct? Past that. Past that. But your ETJ is already a mile past the airport. Well, it'll be a mile past that then because of or up to future annexations. Any other questions about something we haven't already covered, please? Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Item number four. To I'll second the motion. Move the second we adjourn. I was in favor of the motion. Please raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Meeting is adjourned at 7.03 p.m.